guys, welcome to another video of Montana Haven. I've got Justin and Ethan and Braden in the back. He's a friend of Justin and Ethan and mine. There's Matthew. Matthew and I grew up years ago uh, when he was like 16 years old. Him and I uh, did stuff together, rode horses and had a good time and they moved off. Now they're back in Montana. So we're excited to have Matthew with us. But today we're gonna be uh, camping out two nights in the Cabinet Mountain Wilderness. I'm gonna show you where we're gonna head up to. So we drove about an hour from our place and we're gonna be climbing up Snowshoe Peak, which is right there in the center of the screen. That's the tallest mountain in the Cabinet Mountain Wilderness. It's 8,738 feet uh, tall. And we're gonna be uh, going up to a lake that's at the base of it tonight. And then tomorrow we're gonna scale the mountain, head back to the lake and then head home uh, the following day. So we'll be gone two nights. So we're really looking forward to it, but it's just really beautiful. There's Ibex, a little Ibex. Uh, peak right there and the second tallest peak in the Cabinet Mountain Wilderness is right there on the left of Snowshoe that's a peak kind of in the center of the screen right now so it's uh, always a pleasure to go up into the mountains and we're excited for everything we're gonna see up here okay we just started off here I'm not sure how far it is um, but it's between six and eight miles I think we're gonna find out when we get up there based on our GPS and stuff, but it's just uh, heading right through the cedars here. And it, we're basically following a creek uh, most of the way up until we're about a mile or so up from the lake. And then we just kind of head right up the slope. So we're all packing heavy and not sure how many pounds we've got, but probably all between 30 and 45 pounds or so. It's not extremely heavy, but heavy enough. I think Braden's gonna have a good time. Yeah. All right. Wow. It's pretty warm out. We started hiking. It was like 81 degrees. It's probably a little bit cooler right here in the by the creek. I'm guessing it's in the high 70s. But we've gone about probably two and a half, three miles now. So there's probably about five more to go or so. But we stopped, took a break, and stuck our heads in the creek here to cool off just because we're so warm. But uh, it feels really good and cold. That's actually all glacial water. The waterfall up here, coming out of the side of the mountain. All right, we're coming up here to the wilderness boundary. Here's the Cabinet Mount Wilderness and this sign on. Wow, there are a lot of huckleberries up here. If this wasn't so far, we'd come back up to pick. Just look at all of them. Nice, big, juicy, fat ones. And here's some thimbleberries. These are also good to eat. They're not like the most tasty thing, but they're, they're pretty good. Just lots of good huckleberries in here. It's just getting better all the time. Look at this fruit hanging here just crazy wow so amazing good stuff Justin huh mm -hmm. the brush is pretty thick through here probably some grizz waiting around the corner thick brush through here So we'll probably have another about two miles to go, I think. Kind of hard to see the trail. You just kind of have to figure it out as you go. We were walking along here and look at this. A hornet or a wasp's nest right here. I wonder what it looks, look, looks like inside today. It's built right on a branch. Look at that. Why they picked that spot, I'll never know. Oh, right there's one. Oh, there they come. Uh oh, I'm up. They started pouring out after us, so we're heading out of here as fast as we can. 
Oh, it's pretty. Beautiful. That's a picture right there. A cool little pool right down here. We're making our way up here. We're on a pretty steep side hill. It's quite smoky up here. Well, I'm about out of gas. I am tired, tired. Woo! I'm no longer 18, unfortunately. Wow. We're making headway. We came from down there. Wonderful news has reached my ear. We have arrived, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Wow, I'll have to check the mileage. This was a long ways. Wow, this was a long ways. This is amazing. Wow, wow, wow. Whew, somebody's conked out. This is so beautiful. Wow. We're gonna go swim in the lake. We're so hot. Wow, 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 wow. What a beautiful spot. There's the mountain we're gonna climb tomorrow, right there in the middle. That's the highest mountain in the Cabinet Mount Wilderness. It's probably well over a thousand, probably 1,500 feet, maybe 2,000 feet higher than we are right now. Wow, let's look at on the map to verify. We'll climb up that saddle, then go up the ridge. But right now it's time for a swim. Here we go. Woo! Ah, it's fresh. Wow. Ah, oh, it's cold. Ah. Oh. Wow, it feels good though. <coughs> Okay, that swim felt good. Now we're gonna see if we can catch any fish. There's an American Dipper swimming in the water. Okay, well it's bedtime. There, are Matthew and Braden are sleeping in that tent. They forgot the stake so they makeshift a center pole and we ended up um, tying a tarp uh, kind of an angle and we're going to sleep underneath it in case that it uh, uh, rains tonight it's a little bit cloudy and possibility of rain so should be pretty comfy underneath here so we had a fairly good night it was a little bit windy but it didn't rain and it was it was pretty nice and now we're all packed up and we're heading for the top of Snowshoe Peak. Again, that's the tallest mountain in the Cabinet Mount Wilderness. And this morning we're walking around the, this lake is called Snowshoe Lake. It's a real pretty lake. It'll, it'll, this is probably gonna take a good part of the day. Probably not a super long day. We kind of got a late start, but we had a good breakfast. And now we're just gonna ease on up there. You can actually climb Snowshoe Peak from in one day from your, your truck. So, and obviously we're already up here, so it's not gonna be that long a day. There's two ways to attack glacier, uh, Snowshoe Peak. One is the side we're coming from, the other, the other way is on the other side of the mountain. That one's a little shorter, but it's also steeper. So, but it's, it's nice to come back to this lake. It's been quite a few years since I've been back here actually. So, we really wanted to bring my boys up here. They've never been here before. And, and Matthew and Braden haven't either. So I actually brought Priscilla up here 
to this lake and she actually climbed Snowshoe Peak. <laughs> uh, I think this was maybe the first summer we were married or then the following year, I don't remember. Uh, but she came up this way, we came all the way up here to the lake. But my mistake was we came up to the lake, we camped and the next day, we went all the way up to the top and then all the way back out again. And that was almost too much. Um, she hadn't uh, camped and uh, hiked that much. And my new bride, who was almost put her, <laughs> put her in, she was pretty sore for a couple days, but she was a trooper. She did good. She made it all the way through the top so she can chalk that off her bucket list. But yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be a pretty hike. It's, it's quite a ways up there. It's um, kind of a scree slope a lot of the way, which means basically like a boulder field, small boulder, small rocks. We're gonna be hiking in the brush for a little while, but then it'll break out. And maybe a little bit of cliff climbing, not too terrible. Um, this is an easier side to go up than the other side. So it's a beautiful morning. It's probably about, I don't know, 60 degrees, 65 degrees. It's a little cool. And, but when you're hiking, that's nice. So here we go. These flowers are just so beautiful. I love, I love all the little things about nature. How God made everything beautiful. It's just so beautiful. This is called fireweed. And it grows everywhere in Alaska and a lot of places in Montana too. It's kind of a high elevation flower. A lot of times it's, if when there's a burn, it will actually come back and just completely like a forest fire it'll completely be purple the next year after the forest fire but yeah we're just following this creek up sorry kind of out of breath here this is all snow melt it's hard to believe because I don't even see any snow hardly but it's all melting snow from up here And one other thing I noticed this morning, for the first time, literally in probably weeks, maybe a month, there is no smoke in the air, which is amazing. So we've been just, there's a lot of forest fires around and there's been so much smoke. We've just been covered in the valley with smoke. And now we had these strong winds all night and it literally blew the smoke right out of here. It's amazing. It's, you can see all the way over there. You can see from yesterday how smoky it was. It wasn't terrible yesterday, but it was enough of a wind that it just completely blew out the smoke. So we're really thankful. So when we get to the top, we should have some really good views. One other thing I wanted to mention about this mountain, 8,700 and some feet, 38. It's not that, that tall, but because we're at the lowest place in Montana, we're only at just over 2,000 uh, feet in elevation. And so it, the mountains are 6,000 feet higher than we are. So that's why um, they, are, it, they have glaciers on them year round. Now, a lot of times in the fall, we hunt in elevations between nine and 10,000 feet. And this, it's, it doesn't look like this, it's like sagebrush. But here, because the valley floor is so low, you have to, you have to go like 6,000 feet. I gotta show you these paint brushes. These are called Indian paint brushes. Look how beautiful this is. It's so beautiful. Wow. Flowers everywhere. And up there, just touching the clouds is where we're going. Snowshoe Peak. Pretty special to be here. I told Justin, your mother walked this path before you were born. So I'll show you where we're, we're planning to go up on. So we're gonna come right up here, go up that little slide, 
walk across the top right there and then we're going to make our way up that ridge and then we're going to be at the top just like that so i'm figuring about two hours probably Looks a little bit like Alaska, just wild. And well, it looks like a cave up there. This looks like something out of like Lord of the Rings or something. So hard to describe the beauty unless you're actually here seeing it. It's like, there's really no words to describe it. It's like, I actually get emotional just looking at how beautiful it is. It's just so beautiful. There's nothing like it in our world of everyday living this just look at it. it's just everything about everything is just beyond beauty the flowers the formation of the rocks there's some snow up there the sheer wilderness just gets me boys are coming well look at that it just started to rain not real hard just kind of sprinkling passing shower hopefully We're getting close to this ridge up here it's really really beautiful look at the sun shining on those clouds but i see the smoke moving in on those far mountains you can hardly see them anymore matter of fact i don't know if you can in the camera and now we got this fog moving in that's covering the peak so when we get up there i hope it lifts because we won't be able to see the peak it's completely foggy cloud cover Pretty windy, I'm not sure if you can hear me, but we just came up the right side here. This is looking down on the south side of the drainage. Look at all these mountains. That's that one in the clouds right there is an ibex. There's a little ibex. Uh, right there is a little ibex, that's ibex peak. And right there is a little ibex lake. Right there, it's amazing. So beautiful. Look at these mountains, just rugged. Is all get out. There's even a bit better view. It's a long ways down there. Such a bummer that the clouds moved in. It's kind of raining still. I hope they move higher. We won't be able to see anything on top. That is awesome. Look at that. That's a picture. So now we're definitely in the clouds. On this left side, you can still see down into the valley, but on the right side, we're completely fogged out. And the peak is somewhere up in that area. Alas, we made it to the top and it is all fogged in. We can't see a thing. The other guys are standing up there. I'm not even sure which way is home. I'm kind of turned around, honestly, up here. I know how to get back down. I just don't know. For sure it's so it's just totally foggy up here so anyways we made it and uh it's a little chilly up here too bad there's a bunch of cloud cover here but uh hey we made it that's the important thing Well, we're making our way down the mountain now again. For a while, it was a little hairy. Honestly, we uh, we were turned around. It was, you can only see about 20 yards, maybe at the most. And 
We thought we were going down the same way we went up, but we got started getting into these cliffs and it was really bad. So I was actually able to get, uh, see on my phone where we were <laughs> via satellite. And so that showed us we were heading off to the right a little bit too far. So we had to kind of retrace our steps and head down another way. So I think we're actually on the right road now. Um, I don't like to get turned around up in the mountains, especially when it's this windy and cold and raining a little bit. And uh, but it's part of the adventure. We're all good now, I think, and we're we're heading down. So we're trying to get below these clouds. Land ahoy! We can see land again. There's the opening. There's blood exits right here. Oh. There's my dad. This is one huge crack. Way down there. Right there. Right. It goes way down right. there. And we're going up that right now. Now be careful either this. Oh look! Bird camouflage. Hold it, I can see off the top. It's but you're gonna be barely alive, okay. So we just came out of the crack up there. And now we're looking right in this crack. Come down here. There's a way out here. But look down there. Tiny little hole is extremely small. Brain script is back. It's almost got stuck, but we made it. This tunnel, basically. Oh yeah, he got out. Woo! Yes, if I can get out, that means you can. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And see how far up that is right there? It goes really far up there. Oh, right, there's the lake. Yep, to the marmot. Do, do you hear that? The drone snake. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, I'm going in there. All right, there's Braden staying okay, on top. Here. Now let's see. Hey, I'm going to the gate. See ya. No, oh, Braden, wait. We got it. Whoa. Now that we're on our way down, it looks like the clouds have lifted and we could probably see out. So I guess we didn't time our summit very well. There's still some clouds there, but it's kind of definitely lifted. But there you can see the snow. There's some quite a few patches of snow left up in here. It's melting pretty good though. Okay, well we came back from the peak and check this out. I've been fishing a little bit and look what I got right here. A nice rainbow trout. Not a really big one, but he's probably, I don't know, 9, 10 inches or so. So that's pretty awesome. I'm going to see if I can catch any more. This was the only hit I've had so far. And now, after all that excitement, I strung up my hammock and we're just going to... Uh, lay in the hammock a little bit and rest ah beautiful awesome well you can hear the rain we're underneath this tarp hanging out and it is pouring rain so I'm glad we brought this tarp we're gonna have this tarp we might be in trouble Everything is just on the soggy side. It just keeps raining. So we're pretty much going to just hunker under our tarp, I guess, and go to bed. About that time anyways. Soon. Well, good morning. Somehow we survived the night. It was a little bit, shall we say, on the damp side. 
So last night, before we went to bed, it started raining. It basically rained for a couple hours. So we went to bed way early, and Matthew and Braden decided sleeping in that tent wasn't an option, so they fixed this up. They brought their tent, wrapped it around an old root wad and underneath this tree, and they stayed a lot drier. So let's go down and check out our pad. So it survived pretty good, but it was it stopped raining probably around... I don't know, before midnight sometime, and that got really windy and during the night that this tarp blew off, so I had to get up and pound the stakes in. And then about, I don't know, five o'clock this morning or three o'clock, it started pouring rain again. And during the night, I heard some noises out here, so I showed my flashlight out. We had a food stash over there underneath that tree, and I heard, I saw a pack rat trying to eat our food stash. But it's, uh, real fine morning here it looks like i can actually see a little bit of blue sky up there how are you feeling Braden? good you stay warm yeah cool so we're gonna fix us a bit of breakfast and then uh probably head out before too long see if we can pick some huckleberries on the way down and catch some fish and get home before dinner time well one last look at the lake before we head out of here there you can see the peak is completely enshrouded in clouds again just look how clear and blue this water is. So beautiful. There's some blue sky up there. Look at there's an otter going out there. That's so awesome. Wow. So cool. Well, that was pretty special seeing that otter, but now we're on our way out and we're gone about a half a mile and we're heading down this uh, rock face here that we came up the other day and there's the view that we're looking at we basically have to go out this long drainage uh, all the way out about um, I actually looked uh, when we came up it was seven and about seven and a half miles up here so we probably have about seven miles to go so it's just uh, out that drainage out there all the way out and uh, we might stop on the way out and pick some huckleberries take home for the family and uh, maybe do a little bit of fishing in the creek since we only got one fish up at the lake, which was pretty terrible. But uh, yeah, we haven't seen any wildlife except that one otter, which is kind of strange. Of course, birds and stuff, but no big game. So uh, maybe we'll see something out on the way out. I don't know. But anyways, it's a good day. It's drying off and there's some blue skies. You can tell with all that wind, the smoke really cleared out. There's not a shred of smoke in the sky, which is so awesome. So it's just going to be a little wet hiking out because all the underbrush is soaking wet from the rain. But other than that, it's a beautiful day. Here are some elderberries we found on the way down. And they're so beautiful. The sun's shining on them. This is probably one of the most beautiful spots on the way out. It's kind of flat and it's... Just saw some woodpeckers right on this tree. It's pretty awesome. So we picked about a gallon of huckleberries and uh, we stopped beside this creek here. And I told Ethan he can catch his first, try to catch a fish first because he's really bummed out right now. He lost his precious knife, felt really bad for him. It was one that we gave him, kind of a special knife. And uh, so he's feeling kind of sad. So I said, I'll let him try to catch the first fish. So you got tangled up there. Oh, had a fish on. Nice. Little brook trout. Yep, 
Beautiful little brookie. Or wait. I don't know what it is. It looks like a cross between a brook and a cut cutthroat. Okay, I'm gonna pull a dandy out of this pool right here. Nice bunch of fish here from the creek. Yep, pretty awesome. They're beautiful. Caught a whole little mess of them. And it's strange. They look kind of like they're crossed between a cutthroat and like a Columbia River trout rainbow. It's really strange looking trout. But anyways, we're going to head out now, head down the trail. Maybe we'll stop one more time. We picked about, probably all together, we picked over a gallon of huckleberries. Mm -hmm. And yep, that's about two of those plus another about half a bag full. So I kind of climbed this tree here so I could get a better look. The boys are down here fishing. Let me show you where they're at. They're down by this big pool. It's really special to be fishing in these pools. You can almost always catch a fish down in, in one of these pools. Well, hey, look at the waterfalls. Beautiful through here. Nice. 